Hey, what's up Blender users? I'm Jonathan and in today's video I'm going to show you how to create this sci-fi panel texture in Blender from start to finish. This involves the modeling, shading as well as the export of the textures. Oh and by the way, if you enjoy my content, consider subscribing because I upload a new video every Saturday. And with that said, let's get straight into the tutorial. So we're going to start off with the default cube. Just go into edit mode, G, Z and minus 1. So the origin is now at this point. We can then scale it down on the z-axis by 0.1, like this. Now press Ctrl and A and apply the scale. Now if you have box cutter and hard ups, you can just press Alt and X and mirror this piece on the x and y-axis just like this. And now we can for example just draw in shapes and they will appear on all four sides. If you don't own hard ups, you can just add the mirror modifier and use these settings. So let's go ahead and bevel this cube on these edges. Just press Ctrl and B, just like this. Now we can go ahead and add in a circle cutout. So just select a point with Ctrl and move it down, just like this. Again, if you don't own box cutter, you can just Shift A, cylinder, and use the Boolean modifier. But box cutter is just really fast. Okay, now let's add in a few details in the middle. For this, I won't use box cutter. Just add in a cube, scale it down to your liking, and now we can go into wireframe mode, move it, for example, to right here. Now we can move it upwards and select our base object, add in a boolean modifier, of course move it in front of the mirror modifier and select our new object. Now we have this. We can bevel this object, but for a correct bevel to happen we have to apply the scale, like this. Now we can mess with the offset and the segments and also shade it smooth. Okay, great. For some further detail, I will just select this, duplicate it, rotate it by 90 degrees and move it right here. You can then add in a second boolean modifier, again in front of the mirror modifier and select this object. Now we have a nice pattern in the middle right here. We can also move both of these cutters into a separate collection. And then we can just disable this one so they won't render. Okay, what I want to do next is add in another panel detail. These are gonna be bigger panels which should be scattered right here, here, here and here. Okay, so just add in a cube, scale it down to your liking, for example like this and again apply the scale. For this I again want to mirror it on both the y and x axis and then choose these, these edges, Control b and bevel them like this. Great. Now we can again add in some details with box cutter or just with normal boolean modifiers. Okay, great. Now let's go ahead and apply both modifiers and move it to the side just like this. Now just apply all transforms, so the origin is in the center of the scene and now we can again add in a mirror modifier and mirror it on the x and y axis. So we get this detail. Now we can of course scale this down a little bit so it won't cover our hole right here. If we just go ahead and press this icon right here and select a matcap, I want to select the normal matcap, we can preview our normal map. If we go into top view, and this is also the view we will use to export our textures, you can see that we can't see our holes, because we need to scale or bevel these. So if I go into top view again, you can see that if I scale them down like this, we can start to see them. But I personally think that beveling these looks much better. So let's just go ahead and do this. And also do the same right here, we just have to apply the boolean modifiers. Now we are finished with the modeling. The shading is actually pretty easy. I will just press new and add in a new material and now we can add in a geometry node. In this node we will use the pointiness value. With this output we can detect the edges. Let's just add in a color ramp and play with the sliders until we get something like this. We can then for example plug this output into the base color of our principal BSDF. This can give us some cool shading. I won't spend much time on the roughness map, 
So let's just add in a noise texture, preview it, okay, and then we can just plug it into our roughness map. You can now see that we get some, some variation in our roughness. What I found really interesting is the use of the clear code map. We can just put the clear code to 1 and the clear code roughness to 0. This will give it a slightly painted look. Now let's just select our base object and this object we just now shaded. Press Ctrl and L and choose materials. Now they share the same material. Okay, and lastly let's set up our map export. For this we will need an orthographic camera. We already have our camera right here. Let's just press Alt G and Alt R and move it upwards. We will use a resolution of 2048, but you can of course use also a 4K texture. Now let's press 2 and switch the camera to orthographic and give it a scale of 2. Great. Now we need to export our different maps. We will start with the normal map because this is probably the hardest one. For this let's add in a bump texture. We can go into rendered mode or material preview mode to see what we are doing. Let's preview our bump node, but you can see that this doesn't really look like a normal map. For this we will have to add some mix RGB nodes. The first one will be add and with a factor of 1 we will add 1. Again add in another one and change it to multiply and multiply it by 0.5 like this. Now we just need a gamma node and use a gamma of 2.2 to 2. And this does look like a normal map. For a more in-depth tutorial you can check out AD Burrow's video on how to correctly export normal maps from Blender. I also want to use standard as our color management view transform. Great, we can just render this and use it as a normal map. For the other maps, the process is really straightforward. If you have Node Wrangler enabled, you can just control click on every node and export them like this. This for example is our base color which doesn't look like much right now because we are in Eevee. So let's switch over to Cycles and you can now see that this is our base color. You can also add in an ambient occlusion node and export this as your ambient occlusion and do the same thing for all the other outputs. For example, the roughness would just be this. There's one other map we have to export which is a bit more tricky and this is the height map. For this, we will just use a geometry node and add in a separate x, y and z node and just plug the position output into the vector input like this and we can now preview the z value. Just for convenience let's add in a color ramp node so the values will be between black and white. And this is our height map, you can also export this but I would suggest you to do this as OpenEXR because this will give you the most detail. And once you have exported all these maps, you can import them into different programs like Unity or Unreal or just back into Blender to save some resources. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, consider liking and subscribing. And we will see us next Saturday in the next video.